Welcome to Grow My Etsy Shop Podcast, the drips of knowledge you need to start growing. Hey, welcome. So this is coming to you from, or this episode is coming to you from Edinburgh. Now you may be thinking, oh, Jerry, did you move spots? That sounds different than where you were last week. It's not. I'm just pronouncing it the correct way now. <laughs> so last week, um, I did an open question and answer thing on my on my Instagram, which was great, a lot of fun, and someone wrote in there and said, hey, hey, FYI, Jared, you're not pronouncing Edinburgh, I think is what I was saying correctly. It is Edinburgh. And I was like, oh, my bad. So the Orchard Craft Room was the, the Instagram handle of that. And she, so I appreciate you. Thanks for letting me know. Um, I don't know if I would have preferred to just stay in the dark and just keep saying it wrong or know that I've been saying now myself wrong to thousands of listeners. So <laughs> sorry about that, everyone. Um, and, but now that I'm officially saying it like the locals, I think I can, you know, go eat fish and chips and hang out with them now. So perfect. All right, let's get into today's episode. So today's episode is actually going to be two different topics, two very different topics. And the reason for this is that, um, this actually comes from the question and answers that I did on my, on my Friday, uh, Instagram. If you want to catch those, you can actually follow me on Instagram. I'll put my stuff in there as well. And I'll post something in the group today as well. I'll post a question and answer. If you do want a podcast episode or have a specific question you think could be good over a podcast, um, you could just write it in there and I will, I, I think I did an episode like that a few months ago and I could do an episode like that again in the future. If you guys just want to put your questions in there, um, I can go through and answer those right on a podcast for you. Okay, so somebody asked the question, um, they were a vintage seller, and they said, Jared, how? what's the best techniques to selling vintage stuff, especially when you're kind of a one and done? So like you sell your product, and then it, the listing is deactivated at, at that point. And I remember sitting there for a second and thinking, gosh, I don't really know. You know, I'm sure I could think about it, but I'm going to ask someone instead. So I went on Etsy, and I found some Etsy people, and I just introduced myself and said, hey, I have this podcast, this is what I do. And would you mind if I asked you some questions so I can pick your brain about this? And so I had a couple of people say, sure. And of the couple people, only one of them really stayed active. <laughs> so I had one person, but she was very successful. So that worked out. Um, and I was able to pick her brain and go back and forth. And funny story is, as I got done with it and said, hey, I would love to give you a shout out in the podcast for all your help and, you know, kind of give you some exposure. And she said, no, thanks. <laughs> okay, cool. So she'll stay anonymous. Um, but I asked her the question and more or less the thing, and it's one of those questions you ask and then you go. And then once you hear the answer, you're kind of like, oh yeah, that makes sense. So when I said to her, Hey, this is kind of the situation I didn't really think about, but Etsy sellers or vintage sellers get kind of stuck in this. They launch something and then it sells and then it goes away. And so how do you stay? How do you gain authority and how do you stay in positions and how do you work all that? Her response to me was Jared. All vintage sellers do this. And, I, and it, like right when she said that first line, I was like, oh, yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, this is a, you're not a rare person when it comes to the, your competition, right? Everyone is going through, not everyone, but majority of vintage sellers do not have an endless supply of stocks. Um, or did I say stocks? <laughs> an endless supply of products. The, uh, like I, the one I saw that I thought was kind of a good idea were like skeleton keys and stuff and people were making these skeleton keys. So that's kind of cool. Or if you have access to, like they do in Edinburgh here, um, goth markets that you could just buy skeleton keys by the buckets, then those seem to do really well. But outside of that, most vintage stuff is kind of one and done. And so, you know, logically when you look at it, there's Etsy gives listing scores and then based on how well that score is, is what can really help you in search. But Etsy also does store scores as well. And so the overall advice that was given, and, and it falls right in with the doctrine that we always teach here, but it was saying, if you are a vintage seller, try to target a specific type of vintage seller. Try to stay within the same years or within the same type of products or the same um, kind of overall look. You know, if you're going for that century look or whatever, like stay within there, going for that goth look, kind of stay in there because what's happening is as people are buying Etsy's obviously learning the type of buyer that's coming to your store and then as you upload more things, they're going to have more data to be able to place you quickly within the keywords that you're in because vintage stores, everyone's one and done in their stuff. This is going to help you get an advantage and at ahead of the people that you're um, competing against. So that is the overall advice when it comes to selling vintage on Etsy is to just focus in on a target of your store, make sure that, that you're kind of hanging out in that range and then always be updating stuff, adding things, be an active seller when it comes to your vintage stuff. And from there, you'll, you're going to be able to use your store score to help with your SEO. The biggest, that would be terrible advice 
if this was a digital print and I was saying, yeah, hey, this is the way you're going to do it because ultimately listings are what are going to win for a digital print process, but you're going to go through the exact same mindset as if you were a digital print. If you're a vintage seller, just know your stuff is going to get deactivated where uh, instant downloads, your stuff doesn't get deactivated. Okay. So well, yeah, once we had that conversation, I was like, thank you so much. That was, that actually makes, I, yeah, falls along with exactly what we've always talked about. And that's how that works. I just didn't, I guess my brain didn't put together everyone else, all your competition's doing it as well. And so I was thinking, oh my gosh, yeah, you'd be toast. And how can anyone ever sell anything? And anyway, I went through like this huge inter battle with myself and anyway, I came out on the other side of that. Okay. So now, because not everyone here is vintage selling, I thought, well, let's do something that's a little bit more can be reached to everyone. So another question I had was somebody asked the question, well, what is, what is you know, when it comes to email marketing, like I kind of understand how to get my emails and whatever, but what's the best first email to send? Like, I don't really know outside of like sales and promotions what I'm supposed to send. This is a really good question. And it's a, and it's a question that a lot of Etsy shop owners run into is just the idea of like content. What am I supposed to post? What am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to send? Like, that is a problem that everybody has. And so we're going to just talk specifically about emails today. We're going to talk specifically just what I'm going to give you basically is the, the efficient bare minimum that you can do to increase sales to your Etsy shop. Okay. If you have, and I would recommend that you do, you start collecting emails, whether that's, and there's two ways to collect emails. There's back end. I have my one sneaky technique that I speak about in one of those episodes buried somewhere in here. But I have my, there's two ways to do it. There's top of funnel or top of, top of funnel, stuck in my first job here. There's top of mind or, to, or before the sale, we'll call it. So before the sale, which is you put all over your Etsy shop, you know, hey, I'm giving away 20% off. There's buy one, give them free, 10% off your order, whatever, whatever, whatever. Get a, an extra add-on or bonus this or whatever that you put everywhere. So you put it in your shop announcements, in your listings, in your descriptions, in your cover photo. You put it everywhere giving people an opportunity that the people who are most likely to buy from you are going, you're going to essentially take a small percentage or add a bonus in or whatever to get their email so that you can continue to email or continue to reach these people after purchase. And so obviously you're sacrificing a couple, a couple uh, dollars up front. I mean, based on how much your product is, we should say somewhere between 10 and 30% off the upfront cost, but you're, that's your marketing cost of getting an email. The second way of doing it is through the back end. And I have a podcast episode all about that, but it's essentially using a, you forgot your discount code strategy that then people opt into your list to get the discount code after they buy. And from there you can get uh, their email. So using those two techniques are usually the most common ways. You can also just create most of these la um, emails. Uh, softwares have like landing page softwares in them. So if you have like MailChimp or Aweber or um, ConvertKit or anything like that, they, you can build a landing page right in that and you can put that in your Instagram or you can talk about it in your posts or whatever. But realistically, I think you and I both know the, the most successful way you're going to be able to do this is just to try to convert the traffic you're getting from Etsy into email stuff. And this episode's not all about how to do that. We're going to be talking about the emails instead. So let's talk about those emails. When somebody, this is a mistake that a lot of Etsy shop owners make is that when somebody buys, they're like, okay, somebody bought from me and I have their email. Now I need to figure out what I'm going to say to them. And they immediately think, well, what do I know about this person? Well, I know they just bought my product. Therefore, what should I talk about my product? <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm going to go out to lunch with someone. I don't know them. Um, and they show up driving a red car and you drive a red car. So they sit down and you're like, you drive a red car. I drive a red car. Let's talk about a red car. It's like, well, sure. That's something you guys both have in common. You can have a conversation about it, but there's probably other things you have in common. You're both humans. For example, you're both eating at the same restaurant. You're both agreed to meet with each other. Like there's probably have more in common than just that. But if we just lock ourselves into that, A, we're not developing the relationship with our potential buyer and B, we, they just bought from us. So we're just kind of beating a dead horse in this scenario. So uh, what a lot of other people do is then they say, well, how about just promotions and sales and all that kind of stuff. And like, sure, people like a good sale. People like a good clearance thing. But is that all our strategy should be? Probably not. So I'm going to share with you the efficient marketing <laughs> technique of email marketing. This is the bare minimum that I think you should be doing. And quite frankly, it's the bare minimum that I do in my own marketing. So I should probably get better at that on my own end. But like much like yourselves, Side hustle life. That's just what it does. All right. So the bare minimum is that you say, I'm going to take three emails and I am going to have each email play into each other 
that end with a final goal, except actually I like to introduce it in the second and then end with urgency. So first email is content value based email. You're not asking for anything in that first email. The second email is when you introduce the offer and, and a relatable conversation. I'll share more about this. And then the third is you put urgency on it. Okay. So I'm going to walk you through my own little marketing techniques here when it comes to when someone joins Grow My Etsy Shop Facebook group. You join my group and you give me your email. I put your email into my CRM and you're going to get an email from me and it's going to say the words, hey, literally that's what it says. And it talks about the power of the word hey and how it actually works and, and people open emails that say the word hey, lowercase h on it, more than any other subject lines that I've ever tested in my entire life. And even in this old ca in this campaign I have, it's like a 78% open rate or something like that. Like everybody opens this email and I say to them, this is why you open it. It's because the subject line works really good. And now I'm, I want to invite you to use it. You are a business that probably needs people to open up emails in your life. Use this, uh, the subject line and yeah, you'll get more opens. And the importance of someone opening your first email is actually really important because it helps the algorithm kind of know like, oh, you're interested in these emails. They're less likely to go into spam, all that kind of stuff. So that's all I do. I just give away a marketing tip to get them to open the email. That's all I want from that first email, just to open the dumb thing. So I watch my numbers. I make sure that my open rate's good on that. And I know that that's a successful email for me. The next email you get will be a couple, you know, maybe two days later or something like that. You get an email from me that starts to talk about and the relatable side of when your SEO sucks and when you're not getting traffic to your store. And the purpose of that is so that I can start to introduce, and I think a lot of you guys know this, is that I sell that, I have a, it's like the only thing I have available to sell, is that SEO, um, Lunch with Jared is what it's called, and essentially it's that hour-long SEO where I, would, I pretend like you and I are out to lunch, and I talk about everything I know about SEO, and I package that all together, and I made like little sound effects to it, so it sounds like we're at lunch, I have meals in front of me, so it looks like we're eating, and I talk SEO. And that's to me it's literally right now it's the only thing i have to offer and so i talk about the relatable side of having seo that sucks or what it's like to not have a store that's being seen and then i talk kind of introduce this thing of like hey here's this really great thing and i offer a promotional code right there in it for you so if you want it here it is here's your promotional code um now if you don't take advantage of that you get you'll get a third email and that third email will say we'll put urgency on it it'll be like hey here's some reviews of some other people who've really liked it just to let you know, this is out of courtesy, that it's going to go away, <laughs> right? It won't be here forever. So you better use this now if you're planning on using it. Have a good life. Bye. And that's it. I Realistically, I should have a lot more involved in there. I should be really nurturing, nurturing, nurturing. I just don't really sell a whole lot. So I don't have anything to nurture for. But <laughs> in a perfect world, I would. So in your scenario, this is a great way to look at your email marketing instead of being, okay, what's my first email? Oh my gosh, I need to talk about my products. I need to offer service. I need to offer a discount. I need to offer clearance. I need to, no, 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 no. Give value away. So now the question is, well, what does that look like? How do I know what to do? Let's go back to the red car scenario. Your customer just bought something from you. They handed you money for something. The perfect scenario for you is that your store is targeting a specific type of person. You should know the type of person who's coming into your store. For example, if they buy, if you sell dog bandanas, what are the likelihood, <laughs> what are the chances that this person probably owns a dog? Not only owns a dog, but loves their dog, accessorizes their dog, takes care of their dog, right? This is probably someone who's very interested in their dog. Now, what can we do in this first email that's going to talk to a dog owner, that's going to get them excited about the product they, that they just bought? So here's an example. You can introduce other people's dogs and show the, the bandana on different dogs and be like, oh, this is how you put it on a chihuahua or this is how you, I'm sure there would be different sizes, but you know what I mean. How you put it on a golden retriever, how you put it on this, this is how this works or features or something that's going to get them excited about what they just bought, but also who they are. Yes, I am a dog owner. I love dogs and I just bought this product. I'm excited about this product. Well, then if that email gets them more excited about the product and relates to them as a buyer, you're making a connection and getting them, getting them excited about your product. Then, so keep in mind what, keep in mind what we didn't do is we didn't, Right when they buy, send them an email. It's like, hey, you get 25% off your next purchase. It's like, bro, I just bought. 
<laughs> chill out. Obviously, if I was going to buy two, I would have bought two at the time. I, I wasn't because, I, you know, anyway. So we're not pushing that yet. That's going to come later. It's value, sh- can make the connection. Then the next email is where you can introduce. Well, so for an Etsy shop, you know, for my scenario, it's a little bit different. But for an Etsy shop, you know, you might want to uh, oil them up for a review or something. And so a good way to do it is like maybe a week later after you know they received their product, let's say you ship out usually somewhere between two to four days. It takes three days to get it. Great. You could put the next email at eight days out or whatever. You can send an email in that scenario. And keep in mind, this is the bare minimum marketing plan or bare minimum email plan. You can send an email out at that period and be like, hey, you most likely received your product at this point. Um, here is some reviews of people who've loved what they've done and here's what they had to say or here's some unique ways that they've taken advantage of this product or here's some and this is another way to look at it as well like here's some other products that go really well with this that aren't connected to you because people know what you're doing when you're like oh here buy some more stuff from me right now it's like okay chill bro i was just in your store a week ago but if it's like hey you just bought this dog bandana and here's a great leash that goes with this bandana so you don't have to untie it or unhook it when you put it on or whatever um that kind of stuff they would really appreciate. So if you know there's another product, something on Amazon that they can get super quick, you just drop the link in there, they would really appreciate that. And that's a great way to give value, especially right before you can be promoting review. So you can be like, hey, here's this value, or here's this product, here's this link for it, this is a great thing to use for this, I just wanted to send this to you, hopefully you're loving your product. Here's a couple of reviews from people who've recently bought from me, who, what they have to say, I would love to hear what you had to say as well. Thanks, have a good day. That's it. You're not, it's a very, it's, that's called soft. It's a very soft email in the sense you're not saying, leave me a review, please, please, please. You're just saying, hey, here's some value. Remember, I've talked about this before. It's the ATM relationship. You give them something and then you can ask for something. So here's some links to some stuff that you can buy. Here's some reviews of what people had to say, what they liked about it. Do you have anything to say? I'd love to hear. Done. You then can go into email. Now, if again, it doesn't need to be a review email. Also, you can go into just, here's something for you. Have a nice day. Right, you don't, if, especially if you're already using, we've talked about this before, the Etsy messaging technique where you can message people along the way, then you wouldn't want to muddy the water with that. So it could just be straight up, here is value. And then in your third email, this is where you can then put kind of that promotional code something. So now let's just say this one's two weeks out from that last email, that last email was one week out. So this is three weeks out, maybe a month out, and you can send an email at that scenario that says, hey, I'm having a flash sale 25% off on everything in my store. Here's this coupon code. Take advantage of this. It's good for three days. And then if it was me in three days, I'd send him an email that says, hey, by the way, this is closing. Um, if you haven't taken advantage of it, take advantage of it. Bye. And that's four emails right there that you got for just kind of following this system. Now, keep in mind, the way you looked at it is you put four emails down and you said, my end goal is that they use this 20% coupon. So what am I going to do to warm them up to this process instead of I'm going to talk about my 20% coupon over and over and over and over and over again. I'm instead going to give value, connect. I'm going to connect with them and give value and then I'm going to introduce the offer and then I'm going to put urgency on the offer instead of introducing the offer and putting urgency on it at the same time. Not needed. Introduce the offer, then put urgency on it. Okay, this is kind of a long answer, but hopefully it's a good answer that you can understand, you know, what do I say in that first email? It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't think of it as one email. Think of it as three emails and use your, what you want them to do at the end of the third email. So just now write, that's more value-based, that's more giving this and really understand who you're trying to target, who do you want, what do you want them to do and give them value around that. And you'll find that these emails will flow a lot more naturally. Um, you know, even Instagram posts and all that kind of stuff will flow more naturally. I actually had a great conversation with someone. I'll kind of add this at the end here. I know I'm probably cutting close on time, but um, I was meeting with another company or another thing I do for my job. I was meeting with uh, this great content manager. She's just brilliant in what she does. She runs a whole team. So I asked her just like from a mindset standpoint, not from like, you know, the tactical side, but from a mindset standpoint, how do you, how should you be tackling organic content So posting stuff on your Instagram or in a Facebook group or whatever, how should you tackle that, that you feel like, you know, you're getting max value from it? And she gave great advice. So she said, anytime you have something of value, she was like, no, all your posts aren't going to be value posts, right? But 
you should in your content strategy have value posts given. So if you are targeting the dogs, the owner, the, the bandanas, you should be giving away or having stuff in your Instagram or in your reels that are talking to dog owners. And some of those should be tips and tricks and ideas for dog owners. She said, you can launch that content, meaning you post something on Monday that says, hey, I'm going to be doing a reel on Thursday all about, you know, in your stories, I'm going to be doing a reel on Thursday all about this kind of thing. Send me a heart if that's something you're interested in. Love to, you know, some feedback on that kind of stuff. And then on Wednesday, you say, hey, tomorrow I'm going to be going over the, the three things. Here's the, here's the first one. It's kind of a teaser, uh, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. And then Thursday, you release the reel that talks about that, that content that's there. And so she's like, this is a way that you can keep people engaged your followers engage with your reels and have this content that's happening. And then as she was saying, the call to action should always be to engage. So like this post of you, if, if that's something you want to hear, give me a thumbs up in the comments, give me a raise hand if that's what you want. It's just kind of stuff around that. Um, and she said, the idea of that is that you're promoting people to engage and the more people engage, the more the algorithm is going to favor your content to your followers, reels to your outside, and then you're launching your stuff. And so people are aware of it. And when they say like, there's a difference between I'm scrolling through my feed and I see a reel from someone and I'm listening to the hook to see if I'm interested in this, as opposed to, oh, I saw that on this person's stories and they're going to be talking about these three things and I am interested in hearing that and that their engagement rates to stay longer and all this kind of stuff. So I thought that was a really interesting piece of advice of just like kind of use your content and put your content into your calendar of what you're going to be kind of talking about and then just kind of launch around that content. So for those of you who are heavy in reels and all that kind of stuff, I thought that was really great. Okay, that was kind of a side tangent, but just a little piece of advice there. Have a great uh, rest of your or the weekend for you. A lot of you guys listen to this on Monday. I know my statistics, so have a good week. If you're listening to this on Monday and I'll catch you guys next week.